one of my biggest pet peeves out of all of our industry is those misleading infographics that are trying to tell lash artists, if you become a lash artist, you can make six figures or $100,000 or $144,000 a year if you just take my $500 training, right? And it lists out if you take six clients a day at $100 a client, then you get to be at $144,000 a year. If you look up lash artist potential earnings on Google, you will see an abundance of these BS infographics. And yet that is so common for, I'm going to call it, um, maybe some shady educators who are really trying to get your money rather than set you up for success as a earning money-making lash artist. Now, you absolutely can make six figures as a solo lash artist, spoiler alert. And I'm going to show you just how, but it's not the way that these infographics are making it. And it's actually not as maybe challenging as you would think. I'm going to help you determine your worth today on this episode of what price point you need to be at in order to generate $100,000 in sales. I love these, these generic terms that in our industry we throw around, like charge your worth and raise your prices. And again, those lying infographics that say, if you do six full sets, five or six days a week, you'll make $144,000. So what is realistic in our industry? On average, I've seen industry studies, at least for the lash industry, that most lash artists are making $20,000 a year or less. Now, this was a very specific study done by Glad Lash, um, and it was a couple of years ago. Yes, I would say that's probably not too far off for those that aren't running it as a business, that are not intentional about growing it as a business, and they're kind of just doing it as a side hustle because they think they're gonna make more money, but usually that's not enough to support yourself. If you want a business that's going to support you, I've had plenty of students and I have done it myself where I've seen people do five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars in a month and beyond as a solo lash artist. But guess what? If you're competing on price and you're trying to have a race to the bottom of the price point barrel, it's gonna be a lot harder for you to get to that six figure income, right? So what I wanna challenge on these infographics when we really start to look at them with a fine tooth comb of just how misleading they are is who in the world is doing six full sets in a day or five full sets in the day. I don't know about you, but after like two, maybe that third full set in a day, your body starts to spasm because that is a long time to hold it like this. If you have not gotten into lashes yet or you're considering it, full sets on average for classic lashes, right? Single extension to a single natural lash takes about two hours and that's normal. Some can get it down to an hour, although meh, I, I would steer clear of trying to rush the time. I would look more at about an hour and a half to two hours on average for a client once you've gotten experience. It'll take you a lot longer when you're just starting out um, and you'll deal with retention issues and isolation. And until you've got that muscle memory going, plan on it being about two hours for a client. So if you're taking six full sets in a day, that is a 12 hour work day. And these infographics are saying, if you take six full sets a day, five to six days a week, how many of y'all left a job to go work 60 to 72 hours for yourself, Woohoo! but you're killing your body, right? This is a very physically demanding job where there's a lot of repetitive movement. So it is unrealistic that you would do 12 hour shifts with no break, just so you can earn six figures. Sometimes, money ain't worth it that much. Like there's a lot easier ways to make money than 12 hour shifts with these tiny little lashes, right? And the tiny little tweezer movements and holding your shoulders like this. <sighs> so if you're working five, six days a week, 12 hours a day, and you're charging $100 an appointment, is that $100 for the full set? Or are they talking about fills? Because some of y'all can't even imagine charging $100 for a fill, right? But the fills are where the bread and butter is for lash artists, that is what gets you to being fully booked. You're not fully booked with new full sets. Oh no, no, my friend. You are fully booked when you have returning fill clients. So in this infographic that's saying all you're doing is six full sets in a day, how many full sets is that in a week? Better yet, how many full sets is that in a year with never ever having a client return for a fill? You're talking about 30 to like 50 new full set clients in a week 
week after week after week. That's anywhere from 1,500 to 2,500 new clients a year. And I'm telling you, sister, if you can get that amount of new clients into your business, A, let's have a conversation because you are a marketing genius that you can get that many new clients in the door. But B, we also need to have a conversation about how much time and energy and money you're wasting on trying to get new full sets in the door rather than getting the current full sets in to come back for fill appointments. So again, these misleading infographics of like make $144,000. It's so easy. Just get last trained and like you'll be on your way. I'm sorry to break it to you, but it's a big old fat bag of BS. So now that we've started to break down this misleading infographic, is it realistic for a solo business owner to achieve a six figure business? <sighs> the charge your worth conversation. I really struggle with that in our industry specifically because when we tie worth to a dollar amount, my dear sweet lashpreneurs and friends in the beauty industry, there is no amount of money that will ever make you feel worthy if you don't already feel worthy before you have the money. So if you think a six figure business is going to make you feel all good and, and it's going to make you feel like you're just amazing and you're so confident and like, look at me now. I'm here to break it to you. I've seen many people reach that level and they still struggle with the same self-worth and confidence issues they had at $20,000 in sales a year. Never base your worth around a price point, right? Are you good enough? Are you good enough to charge that price? Who determines what's good enough? What, is, what mayor of Lashtown University comes in and says, I dub thee good enough. It doesn't exist. So if we're saying, I'm not good enough to charge that price point. Well, we're not looking at it as a business. We're now all of a sudden tying how we feel about ourselves and how we perceive the result we can get people tied to a dollar amount. Now, yes, you need to be able to get your clients results that the client deems is worth their investment. But have you ever heard of the saying beauty is in the eye of the beholder? We as lash artists are constantly looking at other educators and brands in our social media feeds and we're comparing ourselves constantly because of social media to what somebody else who may be years and years and years ahead of us is doing and now all of a sudden our eye is trained to think if i don't do that kind of work i am no longer worthy of charging this kind of price point or i can't nobody will pay me because i don't do that kind of work over there those that are educators those that are doing strip lash looks those that are doing the russian um perfect line kind of look, that kind of density. But most of y'all are doing average everyday women who kind of don't want the ridiculous butterfly sitting on their face and feeling like they're going to fly away every time they blink. Most of you are doing women who have to be in front of other people and don't always want to have a full face of makeup. Now, that's not always the case. Some of you have people who are in front of people and they want the biggest, baddest lashes they got. Great. But it doesn't mean that the price point is necessarily any different from somebody who wants a full strip lash look compared to somebody who wants a natural look, but the best that they can feel about themselves. That is of equal value because the result is what the client wants, not necessarily whether you can do it like somebody else because she's not looking over there at that strip lash girl. She's a middle-aged woman who doesn't want to look like, you know, doesn't want to have her extensions touching her eyebrows. She just wants to look about 10 years younger and even your skill set that may not be the perfect line educator level kind of instagram worthy lashes that we as lash artists love and drool over she just wants to look her best and that again is worth charging for and a premium price point because of the value and the results it gets for the client so let's stop tiring tying our worth to a price point because it's subjective and we don't always have the best view of ourselves we don't always have the best narrative of ourselves to be confident to charge a high price when we're comparing ourselves to everybody else. So how do you know what to charge? Well, quite honestly, it has to do with where you wanna go in your business. And this is something that I have conversations with my students in D and inside of DMs and emails, and I get these types of conversations all the time. How do I pick a price point, right? And I've got podcast episodes on how to pick out your break-even price point so that you know at a minimum, I am at least breaking even in business. And then we have goal income. So we're gonna figure that out today. I'm gonna show you exactly how you use $100,000 in sales as your goal income to determine 
what price point you want to be at to reach that goal. Now, some of you may have a couple of steps and price increases along the way to get there because some of y'all are way undercharging for the type of business or the type of revenue levels that you want to get at. If you're charging $30 an hour for a fill, it's going to take a really long time and a lot of hours for you to get to that $100,000. But this is where the working smarter, not harder comes in. You don't need 100 fill clients. You could probably get away with doing 30, 40, 50 clients. If you want to work part-time and still make six figures, absolutely. And I'm going to show you that formula. Let's dive into that now. So if you want to take, the, here's, the, here's the thing, being intentional about the type of business that you want to grow. I suggest we start with the end in mind, which is in a year, I want to have done $100,000 in sales. That is our goal. But do we want to work seven days a week, 12 hour shift, 12 hour shift? Shifts. Probably not. That's a great recipe for burnout and injury. So I suggest if you want to get to that $100,000 benchmark milestone, what do you want to have happen along the way? I recommend including vacation time or time off in that goal, right? So because you can, you can divide, okay, if I'm going to work 40 hours a week and I'm going to work 52 weeks a year, then you don't have a break. You never get to take a vacation. You never get to take time off. It is the grind day in and day out. But here's the thing. You're the business owner. You get to decide if you take time off or not, right? So that's kind of the beauty of it, my friend, is you're in charge. So if you want to make $100,000 working four days a week and take a month off of vacation, will you do you, boo, and follow this formula to figure out how much you have to be charging in order to have that day-to-day -day lifestyle where you're not always working and always hustling? So... First, figure out how many weeks off you want to take in a year. Uh, in the example I'm going to share with you today, I'm going to give you two weeks of vacation. You're welcome. But you're the boss. You get to decide how much time you want to take off in a year. Now, that could be two weeks of vacation. That could be a week of vacation here and here. That could be that you take every other Saturday off and over you know, the course of a year, that's like 10, 14 days, whatever. Uh, the next thing I want you to figure out is how many days a week do you want to work? Again, we're looking at the ideal schedule. Because if we're not working towards an ideal schedule and the type of business and lifestyle that we want, what are we doing here? Might as well go work for somebody else who handles all the other sides of business so that we don't have to, we can just clock in and go home and clock out. No, clock in, work, clock out, go home. So how many days a week do you want to work? And then how many day or hours in a day do you want to work? Those are the three things that I want you to think about first before we ever get into the nitty gritty logistics of what you need to be charging in order to have the business and the sales and the lifestyle that you want. So for the example today, I'm going to do two, I'm going to give you two weeks off for a year, working four days a week and a max of seven and a half hours in a day, right? That's, that's a pretty good schedule. You've got three days off during the week. You only work 50 weeks a year and you only work seven and a half hours a day. So, you know, you're taking anywhere from four to six, maybe seven clients, depending on the types of services. So in this formula, we take the 52 weeks we have in a year and we take out our two weeks of vacation because we're not working that time. So we're not going to account for any income coming in during those weeks that we're off. So that leaves us with 50 weeks worked in a year. Okay. If we're working 50 weeks in a year, four days a week, then we in a year's time have 200 work days in a year. So we're going to use this and I'll show you the formula here in just a second and how you figure out how much you need to be charging per hour. So if we have 200 work days a year and we're working on average seven and a half hours a day, then the total amount of work hours that we have in a year is 1500 hours of work. Okay, so that's how we get to an hourly amount in a year's time. If you're working 200 work days a year and you times that by seven and a half, seven and a half hours a day then you get to 1500 work hours in a year. So this here is the formula to determine your average sales per appointment. You take the total number of work hours in a year and you divide that by your annual sales goal. So for our example here, we've got our 1500 hour work hours in a year and we're dividing that by $100,000 in sales. So drum roll please. That means that you need to be charging an average of $66.66 an hour in order to reach your $100,000 goal. Now, how many of y'all are like, that's it? Oh, I thought it would have been way more. 
right? This is where we start to work with the end in mind. How much do we, and that's an average. So if you get a full set that comes in for $150 and it takes you two hours, that's what, $75 an hour? So you're already bumping that up. And maybe you charge $50 for fills. Well, maybe we might need to do a price increase to $55 or $60 an hour to start to bump up the average amount of sales that we get per hour. Now, you can go in and look at any of your past monthly sales to determine this, this um, what you're currently charging per hour. In a sense of look at your total sales from last month and calculate, kind of look at the appointments you had and how many hours that you worked last month. Do the formula. Total number of hours you work divided by the number of sales, that's going to give you an average hourly rate. So now the goal then becomes not, I want a six-figure business. I don't know how to get there. It goes, I want to average $66 per appointment. So instead of this six full sets a day, you look at the average of what you're doing per client. So this is where we don't necessarily have to do a price increase, although some of y'all, most of y'all could probably use a price increase and be just fine. Um, but maybe it's adding in retail. Tip would certainly count in this, right? So if you're getting, you're charging 50 bucks, but you're getting a $10 tip on it, well, then you're averaging $66. Again, as a solo lash artist, right? Because that money's all going to the same pot anyways. It's not like you're handing that off to somebody else. Sales and tip, when you're a solo lash artist, it's all in the same pot. Um, so what is it that you need to do to either increase your average so you're at your goal amount per hour, is it what you need to do to hit your average? Do you need more full sets? Do you need to raise your prices? Do you need to add retail? Do you need to upgrade some of your classic clients to volume lashes because it's a higher price point per hour? Um, waxing is oftentimes the highest dollar amount per hour. Could you charge $20 for a brow wax and it takes you 15 minutes? Think about doing four brow waxes in an hour, right? You're at $80 for an hour, but they're 15, four 15 minute appointments plus tip, right? Um, so if you start to aim for average, look at on average, what am I making per hour? And is that keeping me on pace with reaching my goal of this $100,000 in sales? So just as a little bit of a caveat that I want to hit back and swing back around on that we don't take home everything the business brings in. Unfortunately, there's this little thing called the government that really wants your money. So if you're profitable, meaning that you have made more money than you've spent as a business, then you're going to have to owe taxes. And you're also going to have expenses, rent, the phone bill, uh, marketing costs, your utilities, your internet, your credit card processing fees. So while we can do $100,000 in sales as a business owner, your actual take-home pay is going to be significantly less. That's a whole other conversation for another day. But if you personally want to take home $100,000, then your business sales needs to be much higher. And you got to figure out basically like any profit the business makes is what your income is. We'll just keep it as simple as that. So if you're operating at... 50% uh, profit, meaning that if you charge $100, basically $100 or $50 goes towards um, the expenses to run the business and $50 goes in your pocket, well, then you need to actually be doing $200,000 in sales in order to take home $100,000 in sales. But we'll get into that in another day. Today, I want to focus on how do you get to the point where you can earn $100,000 in your business? The number one skill set that you need to learn in order to get to whatever that price point is, if you're not there yet, can you guess what it might be? The number one skill set, aside from having a service, you don't necessarily have to be the best of the best. I've talked about that in previous episodes. You don't have to be the best of the best of what you do, but you do need to learn how to create demand for your services because your demand dictates your price. Supply and demand, you probably heard that in some sort of economics class or just like on the TV in the background of CNBC's on, like supply and demand. If your time is limited because you are fully booked with clients or you have a lot of clients, your time is then more valuable. Whether you're good enough to charge that price point or not, or whether somebody charges more than you or not, your supply is much more limited if you have more clients. Therefore, vis-a-vis, if so facto, in order to have that kind of demand, what is the skill set you need to learn? Marketing, my friends. Marketing is what creates demand for the skills that you sell. And that is how you have the ability to have an unlimited price increase over time. 
This is how we don't cap our price, where we don't say, oh, there's, I, I can't be the highest price person in town. If you have a demand for it, if you are fully booked, if you have no more time on your schedule to get new clients in, it's price increase time, sister. Be with the goal of dropping off clients who are unwilling to pay the higher price so that we can get the higher price paying clients in because you have enough demand to warrant a price increase. So how to market yourself to the right off audience at a profitable price point consistently, consistently is how you create the ability to get to a six-figure business as a solo lash artist. And if you don't want to come off salesy, if you're worried about being salesy, spammy, I can tell you that marketing and being really good at marketing is how you pull sales off the table. The better you are at marketing, the less selling you'll have to do. Why? Because you've already convinced people that you are the bee's knees. They like you. They trust you. They know what you have. So it's more like taking candy from a baby, shooting fish in a barrel, whatever, you know, metaphor you want to use because you don't have to convince them that you're worth it. Your marketing has already done that. They already desire the results that they think is possible to get from you. Therefore, it's simply as easy as want to book an appointment. Here's my website, my online booking. Even better, they go ahead and do that without even getting you involved because you've created enough demand through your marketing that they just go ahead and they book themselves without you being involved in it. So can you imagine what your business and your life would look like if you mastered marketing over the course of the next year? If you had that number one skill, if you were confident that you knew how to communicate to someone the value of what you offer, why they should choose you, why you can help solve their problem that they've been struggling with and looking for a solution for for a long time. If you felt confident in that, what, what would be possible for your business a year from now? What would two to three new clients a week look like for your business? Consistently for the next 50 weeks, because remember you're gonna take two weeks off. If you had two to three new clients a week and they came back consistently for their fills, how many weeks would you need to generate that kind of demand? Two to three clients a week? I don't know, maybe 20 weeks. I mean, that could get you fully booked. You know, what, what is that? That's uh, 20 weeks divided by four. That's like five months. If you learn how to market yourself and you consistently did it for five months and you got two to three new clients a week and they came in for fills, you'd be fully booked in five months, right? That would be 40, 50 clients in there. Imagine if you stopped all the busy work of posting social media without a strategy and then you're taking all this time and energy trying to get it to work and hashtags and and following and using reels and you're just not getting any traction but you're spending all this time and energy when it could be much simpler than that it could be much simpler than you flyering a mall parking lot it could be much simpler than you offering promotions and giveaways and discounts and still not really getting any clients it could be simpler and a lot less expensive than using sources like Groupon. If you learned how to market yourself, that is the greatest gift that you can give yourself as a business owner. Let's just say you even left having a business. You're like, yep, business ownership, not for me. Do you know how valuable marketing is in the skill set of anybody who runs a business? Anywhere you would get a job, understanding how to communicate with customers, the value of whatever product or service the company that you work for offers is a huge asset to you. It is a life skill that you should learn. And as a business owner, you must learn it. So imagine what's possible for you if you learned how to master marketing. Just envision with that. That's what I want to leave you with today. So yes, totally possible for you as a solo business owner to create six figures in revenue in one year without overworking yourself, working part-time, making a full-time income, making more money than you're probably making now, all because you had worked with the end in mind and you were strategic in how you got there. I hope that was valuable for you today, guys. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll catch you next time.